Já, því þetta fór í loftið var það ekki? Ok, hæ. Við erum lægð. Technos. Technos, the two technos. Já, exakt. Two technos are coming together and, and trying, to, trying to do something that is not exactly working for us at the moment. But let me it's see. Always like, it's always like this when, you, when you're doing something live in front of the broadcast studio. The broadcast studio, exactly. It's like when everything else can fail, it will fail right now. That's what, just what happened. But we will not surrender. No. <laughs> we will do this again, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So I am going to simply um, introduce our guest tonight, Thortis Loa Thorarsdóttir, or Loa as most people call her. I believe that she is an exceptional and one of a kind business leader. She has an extensive experience as a leader, both in the private and public sector. She has been running businesses and corporation, both here in Iceland and internationally with her restaurant and health food brands that for, she, for example, ran in Finland for years. Loa was in 2011 one of 100 women worldwide who received the TIAW award for her accomplishments of empowering women. The president of Finland, yeah, yeah, and president that awarding her left right center, <laughs> <laughs> he awarded her for her outstanding work in the Finnish Icelandic Chamber of Commerce. And I'm going to think of something. Yeah, there are some, there are plenty of plenty of things to add into this. She is the past uh, president of the Association of Icelandic Business Women, FKA. Um, she is the co-founder of Nascar Investment. That's an investment group that was founded in 2008 by 19 Icelandic women business leaders. And I believe that she is a hunter not just talking about then her passion to hunt and, f and catch the next wild salmon or, or a goose or a reindeer or whatever it is. No, she's a natural hunter for creating fun and inspiring atmosphere wherever she goes. I can go on and on and on and on, but I'm going to say, Loa, <laughs> welcome to the Changemakers podcast. Thank you, Runa. Thank you for your kind words. And nice to be with you again. Oh, yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> take two, take three. We, we, will, yeah. we will not surrender, that's for sure. Yeah. I'm going to go directly into my first question. Um, Loa, you are a change maker. I mean, you're a true change maker yourself. You have a track record of leading changes in businesses and corporations. And in a way that really stands out, just tell us the secret. How do you really do this? <laughs> How do you manage to do the things that most leaders absolutely are threatened to do, meaning uh, leading a change and be anything around change? Most people hate it, or they, they know that they should do it. Tell us. Spin it. Well, uh, <laughs> first of all, I love changes. Uh, and I think uh, just the, the ambience and the, the positiveness of going into change is a key factor. But uh, I think one of the one of the many things I've learned through the years, and I've done a lot of mistakes as well, is uh, I've learned that in 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 order to engage your team in your goals and that you know do the changes that you need or you want to do. You need to learn to listen to people and you need to, to trust your team and to make sure that you fulfill those two values. And, and, and all is, the, and this is all based on my core value, which is believe in people at all time, mm. all, always. And, and that, that's the core foundation of, of my teamwork, of my leadership. And I've learned it the, the hard way in a way because it's it's you know one time you get a job and you you become a manager and that's a huge job but if but if you don't manage to lead your team uh you are a very lonely manager and then nothing happens because you do nothing alone you always need people with you and uh you know nothing moves if you're just a one person show 
so it really needs something something more and and that energy that is in the change because i really like you know moving things and changing things whether it's mm -hmm. just you know a business or it's an organization and 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 this is also maybe a little life strategy because nothing nothing is never still if you just take the metaphor if you're rowing the boat and if you just take up the rows what happens the water takes you you're not managing or directing where you go so you you know you need to row the boat and when you're rowing the boat you're always changing things you're changing direction you are you know i can go on and on with this metaphor but the big thing is life is moving on and and you are you're always going to be moving on as well so there is no need to to fear changes it's really you should really embrace them and and take them as a challenge and as something positive in in people's lives so <laughs> you okay. made, you, yeah that, that was that, that was easy <laughs> <laughs> i can do that <laughs> i know you can i don't actually think that there are many people who are i mean they might it might sound like this is very very easy but I um I doubted that that's really what they're feeling that it is so easy after all. Uh, no, I think it's a very true to our nature to be uh, conservative and to mm -hmm. don't want if you have something and you're comfort comfortable there. I, I think it's very much in our nature to stay there, mm -hmm. but we we can't stay there. We can't stay still. Uh, we always have to be moving, and really we are. There is no such thing as staying still. If if we really stop to think about it, we really understand it very quite easily that change is always going to be. But I've I've been changing. I've gone through numerous uh, changes in my 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 career or my my life, and it's it's always the same. People are hesitated in the beginning, but then it comes up again to being a leader to to lead the way to to give the vision where are we going we're going that way how are we going there well let's make that plan together mm -hmm. let's you know let's do that together and uh, you say something there that i think is the key and that is about you know okay you as a leader you have a vision and you're going somewhere now the whole thing here let's do it together mm -hmm. Yeah, it is you know, one of the core thing when it comes to the leadership um, concept. As we see the the new the new leader in the twenty first century, that's how they they should be moving. Mm -hmm. But that thing about doing it together seems to be something that so many leaders are struggling with. They might know that's how they should be doing it, but they're not exactly doing it. So, what do you what do you think that it's stopping them uh you know it's e it's much easier uh to do things alone do it you know your way or the highway as some people say but yeah. it's 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 always easier to do things alone in a way no the, i'm not it's not really easier but it's easier to start that way but you really yeah. don't get good results so yeah. therefore it's it's better to to do it with a team but mm. You know, when you start engaging yourself in some project, uh, it's um, it's 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 a, the tricky part is to get people with you in your team and make it uh, a common goal that where you're going. And mm -hmm. and and you you can take the sport metaphor a lot here, but the sport has a little different environment in sports, for example, because we in Iceland now we love to talk about football <laughs> because you know. For well, the obvious reasons, we are going to Russia, they won the World Cup. But for example, when you're if you're playing a foot in a football team, the rules of the game are very uh, clear, and the rules are international. And in a way, it doesn't really matter who you're playing with; you know the rules of the game. In business and in life, this is a little more tricky than that. So one part of this is to one part of that I I try to do is to really make uh, our rules common that we make together how are we going to play this how are we going to do this and then it's the layers of 
of vision and goals. And it because you can fly over like an eagle and you can see the big picture. But then when you, you know, when you go down and you go down, you zoom into specific, more specific area. And this is really how it works. And we have, to, and that's always a challenge is to get the team with us to, to see the big picture, but at the same time to take all the mini steps that we, we need to take. And, uh, and to me, the, the key factors there are listening to people believing in people and trust them because if, if yes. these factors are not there it's gonna be a very difficult ride yeah and and listening to people and believing in them and creating that trust uh, it's a special quality to be able to do that what do you, and trust as being I think for I think we can all agree upon that trust is a key factor to to have in an environment yeah. so that the belief comes and and that the yeah uh, that the the listening i mean if you if you don't trust the person that you're talking to you're not going to say anything <laughs> so that core of trusting your people um where do you yeah what have you been using? What sort of a strategy have you been using? Or what do you do to enhance trust inside of your organizations? I actually couldn't hear what you said because uh, some about the connection was going in and out. Could you okay, so, give so me a I, I would short repeat, version yeah. of it? Short version of it. Trust being the core factors. Can you share with us how mm -hmm. do you, how have you been building trust? inside of your uh, organization and businesses? I, th I think it's a lot about letting go, letting, uh, you know, when giving people space to take the projects or whatever we're doing and make it theirs and, and, mm -hmm. and let go of mini or micromanaging, let go of you have to be uh leading or, or for overseeing everything so it's a little bit about letting go but it's also about the f giving people flexibility within the roles to make the roles their own and uh, mm -hmm. again and again i think it comes to us as managers or as leaders to to stop and to listen and to give the people the freedom to flow a little bit um, you know so of course sometimes you have to stop if people are going out of boundaries or whatever They're, but you, as a leader as an as a manager you usually have uh, <clears throat> the how do you say this you, you usually have the the know-how of when or seeing when are they within the yeah. the framework or when are they going out there so at least in my in my experience, let go is is always a good sign, and yeah. just let it flow and let go, because it's people are intelligent, yeah. yeah, and and they are experienced and they know what to do. Yeah. So basically, yes. when you have built a team that you trust yes. and and you're clear on the on the vision that you shared earlier, and. It's interesting that you talk about the flow. So when, when you have that installed, your team, uh, the vision is there, um, you can basically let go of micromanagement to allow people, like, it's like your boat that you talked about earlier, to allow the boat to, mm -hmm. to, to float for, to the desired destination. That's another thing that I think is a key factor and I've been talking a lot about and is something mm -hmm. uh, very much in my own core when I'm building the team is that if I build up a team, I need to, I need to choose the players mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and I need to make sure uh, and that this is, a, this is a, 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 on my to-do list at all times is to make sure that my team is diversified. So we're not having a team that is homogeneous. I don't want a team of mini me, of, of mm -hmm. people with my experience, my educational background. 
I want people who are the opposite, who have something that I don't have, who bring something totally new to the table. And, and I think diversity is very much a key factor when we are building teams and to trust as well that when you have a team in front of you or with you, that you really have to trust that diversity to, to kick in. And it, it usually does. And it doesn't have to be, you know, in big corporation or, you know, in big businesses. It can also just be, you know, something very much in your private life. Let's say that mm-hmm. you are a football mom and you have a, a group of, of parents that need to organize something. When you are planning, who, who do I need to take with me to this job? Make sure that you, you pick people with who are up, who, no, who are different from you, who, who take something new in. Because if we have that, and, and it's again with a sport, uh, metaphor, because when we are playing sports, we all have different roles. And that again is also the, the dis- diversification. If I, I'm hoping my English is okay, uh, for mm-hmm. that. But, uh, this is also very much uh, something that I take very true to my heart and is part of my core values when I when I'm building up teams and 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 getting that engagement into whatever project we are launching or mm-hmm. and I think this methodology or yeah this methodology it it takes over all kind of team spirits and leaderships and and this listening skills I've learned to 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 implement them in my own life, not only in my professional life, but in my family life as well, to make sure that I'm listening. And this does not come easy to me. <laughs> I'm a talker, <laughs> as you can see. Yeah, I, I, I know I know as well from uh, your vitality test uh, charts that, that it must be a really challenge for you actually to you, you must push yourself to the listening part. But you, I can also tell you that you, you're good at it. You're actually yeah. quite good at that. Yeah. Yeah. So good as to you. you. Um, I know that, I mean, I've been working with you for such a long time and I've seen how you work things in a group and it is quite something. Um, can you give us a story or share a story with you where you felt that how you have been leading and how you've been engaging with your team has really uh, made a difference for the company culture? Yeah, I could give you a, a rather recent story, I think. Uh, uh, <clears throat> I've been uh, for the last over a year, I've been leading a, a rather, rather large Icelandic uh, tourist company, which has uh, a great team spirit in it uh, and has had that team spirit for a long time because there's lots of entrepreneurial energy. But it's grown from being a very small company into being a large one with almost 300 employees. And in uh, it's an Icelandic uh, uh, custom or or... or usually that we have this uh, once a year a huge annual party which is a tricky thing when you have a company that is you know on in service 24 7. so what we did this year was that we decided to go uh, to to berlin and we decided to there will be two trips and of course you know the employees whether on this shift they went to trip a and on the other shift they went to trip b but the management team uh, also went to either A or B. And I thought, well, I need to be on both. I need to be in both trips. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I, there is a good foundation for me to, to be a whole weekend in Berlin with the people I'm working with always on a very uh, professional level. And there I can interact on a very personal level. And how can I, as a leader, as a team leader, choose one trip? over the other one. It was very much uh, out of my comfort zone to do that because it's it's not true to my core values. My core values being I want to be part of the whole team. So yeah. I took two trips to Berlin and I decided, okay, let's spice this up a little. Let's do it with a little flavor because they, at this time I was rather new 
as a CEO of this company. I'd been there for half a year when this happened and, and they didn't really know me very well. So I thought, okay, let, let's give them something Loa style. So I, I, I talked to my husband and he, he was going to be with me. And for many years, we have had this very strange custom from Tyrol. So. <laughs> You know, with the, where they have an Oktoberfest or something with the leather house and then, you know, me being super sexy and that whatever costume it is. So, yeah, that, that's exactly that one. So we decided that we wanted to greet uh, because, of course, the, the big party was on one night in Berlin. So we decided that uh, we wanted to greet the whole group when they arrived to the place. And then we were ready, my husband in his leather house and I, super sexy in that that costume, and uh, with a hat and everything, I was you know totally in it. And they were going, "Who is that? Who is greeting?" They came walking towards me. Oh my god, who is that? That's Loa. Holy shit, is she drunk? <laughs> but, but they soon realized that we were just there to host in the beginning, and just to make a little fun out of it. And just to get to know the team on a different level. And, and to me afterwards, after that was so precious for me to have had those two trips. I learned and I experienced so much with the whole group. And I, it, it, it took us all, uh, I would say two or three steps forward in the strategy work that we had already started in the, you know, the team and the team spirit and the passion. And it just, those two gestures, just going twice to Berlin in that, you know, situation that we were made a huge difference. And I'm, I'm so proud of that today because it was so easy just to say, no, I don't have time. You know how life is. No. Yeah. Yeah. I'll take one. I'll save some money or yeah. that would have been very easy. No, but, and, and I, yeah. So, and, and putting your character into that. So not I, from my perspective of the whole thing about the X factor that I'm always talking about, but I can, I can see that that's so much your authentic character to be there in the Tirola outfit. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, the diva that you was. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it would, I know that not everyone have could, could have been in the Tirola outfit, but I'm sure that if they would be themselves, there will be another outfit that they could have been. And, yeah. and I think that's a courage and that is exceptional. And, and that tells me that um, when you actually take that extra step, you become who you are and not your, well, which I know you are always are, but you become that personal, you, you open up the space for them to get to know you on a personal level as well. That is uh, exceptional. And uh, I, yeah, I totally get that that works. I can see that we are coming. Yeah. Yeah. Any, do you want to add to that one? No, I think the authenticity, or how do you say that? Uh, that sincerity. Yourself. Yeah. yeah. You know, for me, that was being in a Tyrol uh, costume. But, you know, whatever it is, be yourself. Because if you're not yourself, it's not working <laughs> as a exactly. leader. Yeah. 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 I think it's even more important for leaders to do that. And in in the environment that we're living in today, where we uh, are exposed anyway with the social media and everything that's happening, that it uh, it actually I think it benefits everyone to be themselves.